Steve E talking to Chelsea City manager Robbie Simpson. Robbie, it's been four weeks now since we last caught with you. How have you been keeping in that time? Yeah, very well. Just plugging away, really. It's good that some of the restrictions have now lifted and we can play golf and get out to some beer gardens and restaurants outside. So it's yeah, it feels like it's slowly returning to to some sort of normal. It feels like a very long time. Um, but yeah, glad it looks like we're almost we're almost there. And um, yeah, yeah, I'm keeping well. Thanks, mate. Nice one. Um, and obviously, it's only April at the moment, the end of April. Um, how are the preparations are going for sort of next season so far? Yeah, it's crazy when you say that. It's still so early. Like um, the the actual season, if it was carrying on, still wouldn't be finished yet. And we're speaking about how how preparations go. So still a long way off. Um, but I'm really happy so far. We've you know, we've got, I think uh, my remit is is clear to to help the club become a self-sustaining football club, um, but at the same time, keep us competitive in the league. And I think given those parameters, those clear parameters, we have to have, and it's, it's good that we've got the time to actually have a clear strategy in place for recruitment this summer. Um, and I think we've got that. And I think without doubt, we have to align it with the Clarets 10 vision about bringing through our own players into the first team. So that has to always be in the forefront of, of everything everybody does at the football club, because that is our, that is our vision. That is, that there are values of what we want the club to be or what the people at the top of the club want the club to be. So I've always got to have that in the forefront of my mind. And I think there's a squad makeup where... To remain competitive, I feel like we need to probably have an average age of the mid twenties, um, given everything. So, and that's a balance of elder players, so your your thirty year old players that can be there as and, and and have experienced lots of things in the game and can add value not only on the pitch but off it to the younger players we want to bring through. Um, obviously, as I've just mentioned, the younger players the the 18, 19, early 20-year-olds that we hope can remain with the club for a long time and develop through. And then you have to balance it with, with those mid-20-year-olds that have got experience in the league and, uh, and are so-called in their, in their prime, I guess, of um, the, th- this is their level and they're good players at this level. So we have to have a good balance of a squad with, like I say, an average age of, of, of mid-20s, but with those kind of three groups three groups of, of of the squad in mind. So I'm really happy with where we're at now. Um, like I say, still a long time to go to the start of the season. August 14th seems still so far away. Um, but we've made good inroads so far. And I know we've been announcing a few signings and there's there's some more to come. And it's, it's really exciting, really exciting. Great. Uh, and obviously since the last update, there's only been... Uh, just a one departure and that was Lee Wogan who we announced will be leaving the club at the end of his contract what are your sort of thoughts there? Well I think it made it clear that we wanted to keep Lee for another season at least um, he was great for us last season um, one of the elder players that I speak about that had a great influence not only on the pitch but off it and Jacob and, and Sam Kingston and and young Josh as well in the academy working with him have, have really benefited from working with him um, we wanted to keep him. We offered him a new deal, but you know, another club in, I think, in our league offered him a, a deal he just couldn't refuse, and we could get nowhere near. So, um, yeah, we it, it, he had to take it, and I actually said, "Look, you've got to, you've got to take it," and just goes to show what we're trying to build here. He was he was really not not down because he got offered a great deal, but it, it was something he couldn't refuse. And even then, he was like, well, "I really, I really was thinking about it." Um, so that just goes to show the culture that what we've built and how people really want to buy into what we're trying to create here. The fact that he was even thinking about possibly staying given the offer that he got. So, um, yeah, listen, we thank Lee for his time and, um, our plans have kind of been accelerated for Jacob. Like I mentioned, when he signed that we plan to keep Lee for another season and, and then eventually Jacob take over the mantle, um, and we've decided to just accelerate that plan really and, and bring it forward a year and a year or two. And, and Jacob's now going to take the mantle and I'm sure he's going to do very, very well.
Yeah, and of course, Jacob as well, having us already announced that he's staying next season, he spent a season learning from Lee as well. It's a, it's a, it's a good opportunity now for, for him next season, isn't it? Yeah, and he's that's the thing as well. He is a bit of a sponge. He's, he really, really wants to learn and get better. And um, he's, he is going to be a great keeper for us. You spoke a bit earlier on about the, the club's sort of vision for the team next season and, and how that's going to work. We've obviously announced the signing of um, Callum Jones already and Louis, Louis Dunn earlier today. How do they fit into that vision? Well, they're obviously, um, I think one of the things that we've got to do, given our, our situation at the club, is maybe find mistakes. So we hope that Colchester have made a mistake releasing those two players, just like we did with Cameron James as well. We feel like there's potential there that that Colchester may just have made a mistake. And given that they're local boys and given the way that we want to be as a club in terms of developing players and then like they've seen with Danny Imray, potentially develop them and move them on, I think they see it as, a, as an appealing proposition that we've got for them. And we certainly feel like they could be... Um, those mistakes that other clubs have made. And I think they fit into like the, the younger, the younger category, um, you know, early twenties that we can, we can develop um, potentially stay with us and grow with us, but also potential to, to move on. And like, like your Danny Imre last season. So them two certainly fit into to that category. Okay, great. And uh, we've also announced obviously that, that, that Cameron James will be staying and also at Adebola, Aluo. Um, is that due to the potential that they've got as well? Absolutely, yeah. It's tough recruiting because the season's been null and void, so it's tough recruiting from from lower leagues. Um, but Ade, yeah, we, we've got our um, James Clark, our, our the fitness coach from last season, to to thank for making us aware of Ade. Um, and yeah, he's just been a real find. So if if we can if we can find another Ade this season, um, then then that'd be fantastic. And he's one that's still got lots of developing to do, but certainly one that, well, both both him and Cameron, I feel, have got futures in the in the football league in terms of full-time professional football. So um, we hope that we can assist in that journey for them. And and who knows, they might stay with us for so long, um, we might eventually become a football league team. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, the vision, the vision's there, the ten-year vision's there. So um, yeah, you never know. So yeah, they're, they're two, they're two players that that had good seasons last last year and and really stood out in the short, you know, sixteen games that we had or whatever. So it, it's really pleasing to have kept them two. Yeah, and with Cameron having been at Colchester previously with, with um, Callum and also Louis as well, how important will that be to help those new players settle in at the club? Yeah, it's always nice when you know someone. Um, when you move into a new football club, I moved to to many new football clubs, and it was always nice when you had a familiar face in the dressing room, and it makes you just settle in that that much quicker. So yeah, it's always nice for them. Yeah, uh, and with further player announcements set to come uh, fairly shortly, um, how much are you focusing on on sort of developing the club's own younger players from the academy next season? Yeah, like I said earlier, I think the Clarets Ten Vision has to be in the forefront of my mind. That's that's the reason why. I'm in, I'm in the position I am at the football club because I believe in it. I've been through it myself. I've come, came through an academy at this level at Cambridge City and moved on to bigger and better things. And I think the Clarets 10 vision is clear. You know, I've, I've read it a lot because we've got it written down on paper. So I've read it a lot and I've, I have to make sure that everything I do is aligned to that. And, um, and I, more importantly, I buy into it. I think it's a fantastic vision and I really, really believe in it. And I will... I will bring players through. There's no question. I will bring players through from the academy. I will develop them. And and Chelmsford City will have um, a first team squad full of homegrown players in within that 10 year, within that 10 year vision. And um, I, I can't wait to see the fruit of it because we're, let's face it, we're, we're at the start really. Like the season just gone was very much a, People have said it's a developmental year, but it wasn't really a developmental year either. It was it was a transitional year. And sometimes you've got to wind down from the previous thought process and the previous regime. You have to wind down. So that, that maybe takes a year to sort of wind that down because a complete change can sometimes be very disruptive. 
you kind of have to gradually wind down before then you can build back up. And I feel like we've got a head start on building back up because we've got the academy in place and we've already found a, you know, they had a great run in the FA Youth Cup and we've already found some great players to come in at year one for the academy next year. So we've got a bit of a head start on on what I would probably call this year being a, a developmental year starting from, I say not starting from the bottom, but starting from from nothing. But we've got a bit of a head start on and we can build up now. And I think it's it's a really, really exciting time to be involved in this football club and be part of something from the from the very start and with a clear vision in mind. I think it's a really, really exciting time to be part of this football club. Yeah, uh, and as, as well as bringing players through and also bringing them in on contracts, how important is it to sort of build relationships with other clubs as well? And, and is there any scope next season for loan players like with Dylan, Dylan Asangani last year? Uh, is there any scope for that next season? Yeah, I hope so. I think... Um... In my head right now, in terms of the squad, I think we'll look to get two loan players in if we can. Um, I don't want any more than that, really, um, because then it becomes just too much of a, a squad full of loan players. We want we want Chelsea City players predominantly. Um, but yeah, there's scope for a couple of loan players, I think, um, that I've got earmarked. So we'll see whether they come through or not. You never know because there's more than... There's three parties involved, the player and and both the clubs and sometimes an agent, unfortunately. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, there's there's scope for utilising that. And I think um, it's a lot easier to look at clubs above um, because they're still playing. And so it's lo- easier to look at um, players that we could potentially loan from from leagues above than it is to to find your Adebolas from, from leagues below because... They're still playing and under 23s and under 18s are still playing. So, yeah, we're, we're on that path still. Yeah. Uh, and in, in terms of um, style of play for next season, is that sort of clear in your mind with the players that you're bringing in or is it sort of you're still sort of working it out? Yeah, I think last year um, I made them probably the mistake, really, the naivety that I had. A, I've got an ideal vision for how I want a team to play. Um, but again, it was a transitional year last year, and sometimes you have to wind down from and think about um, the level, the pitches, um, the players, and um, you have to you have to compromise, you have to adapt your style really to suit. And um, I learned that I learned a lot last year, a lot. And um, I think one positive we can take is that we were very adaptable. You know, even even in game, we're adaptable. You know, we 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 came from behind a lot by just tweaking things and, and playing differently. And um, you know, th- you think to the bit of Ricky game, the Braintree game, we've we managed to do that. And um, I managed to recognise that. But more importantly, the players managed to then recognise the tweak or recognise the difference that that I tried to make them do, and and it came through. So that's really really positive. And let's say I have got my ideal. Um, in my head the way I want football to be played but I have to be adaptable and all the players that, I've, that I'm signing and that I've kept know my ideal vision but again I've stressed to them that we have to adapt to different scenarios we have to adapt to different pitches we have to adapt to different teams we play against and um, yeah flexibility is key but I, I always have the ideal in my back of my mind and and we might we may not be playing that type of football, maybe not for the whole season next season that I, that I want, but we will develop it here on, because you can't throw, especially part-time football, you can't throw too much at the players. You have to kind of work on one thing at a time. So we'll be doing that and we'll develop. And the academy, it's good having Spills and Wardy in the academy because they know as well the way we ideally want to play. So when players are coming through from the academy, they, they instantly know um, how the first team want to play as well. And that's that's crucial, really. Yeah. Uh, and looking at the wider club, this is obviously the, la- the last time we'll catch up now before the, the group of supporters go on their long walk from Land's End to Winchester. Um, they've already raised £4,500 and, and, and that's a fantastic effort from them, isn't it? Amazing. Amazing. They're doing great. And I know, obviously, everybody's distant at the minute still, but we're right behind them. Everyone at the football club is right behind them and they're doing absolutely fantastically. And they're, 
they represent what the football club's all about them doing that it's you know people going out of their way to to raise funds for others it's it's fantastic right uh, and finally over the weekend the club will be taking part in the social media boycott that's taking taking uh, taking place across sport how important is it that that we stand with with clubs and organizations across the country against sort of online abuse really important you know it's it's been a subject that's been enhanced probably due to fans not being allowed in in stadiums and um having having these avenues and i just think that when you look at people that do abuse other others online what do they get from it it's it, you know i just don't get it i don't get it it doesn't help anybody it doesn't help the player you're abusing uh, and it doesn't help doesn't help yourself feel better about your life it just i just don't get it and it's not okay it's not okay today it wasn't okay you know before lockdown and it and it's not okay in the future and you know people might say look it's only a weekend but it's a start it's a start and um yeah I, i'm proud that us as a club are, are, are sticking by that and um and standing with everyone else because we're all in this together look we all want to everybody loves football because it's it's a game we enjoy um we love either playing it or watching it ourselves like you know fans love playing it themselves i'm sure and and we see our kids you know go out and have such enjoyment playing football and we, we've not got to lose the fact that, that that's how that, that's what football is it's it's seeing a kid with a smile on their face imit, imitating players that they watch on tv that's what football's all about it's not about seeing someone make a mistake and being able to go online and abuse them and um I think it's very important that we, we we all stand together on that. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, thanks for your time, Robbie. And um, we'll look forward to catching up with you again in another, another four weeks' time. Thanks, Andrew. Take care, mate.